Professor Brahma Chilani stays with me. Daniel Boardman is senior correspondent of the National Telegraph who joins us uh, live from Canada. Daniel, what's the word in Canada after India very strongly called out Justin Trudeau saying not a shred of evidence has been shared in the past one year? What's the buzz on ground? So first, I'd like to say it is incredibly refreshing to be on a television news network that refers to Hamas and Hezbollah as terrorist organizations instead of humanitarian outfits uh, fighting for social justice. So I commend you on uh, the previous segment. Um, now, in terms of what Canada is thinking, um, you have to remember there's like crazy time difference here. We're ten and a half hours behind. So I like to say, India, you are in the future technically, but you're actually kind of in the past. We are about two and a half Trudeau scandals ahead of you right now. Um, so the word in Canada, okay, India, it, Canada, Trudeau burned our relationship with India. That's that was Tuesday. We are now on Thursday, uh, and the Thursday scandal is we're going back to the fact that there's 11 traitors that our security agencies have identified sitting in Parliament right now. That's the problem. And what Trudeau tried to do a lot on India, there was a lot of things, but one of the things he obviously tried to do politically was a rally to the flag moment. And you had a bit of that. The Conservative Party has to back them. When the RCMP comes out with these allegations, like all parties who sit in government have to come and rally to the flag. In, in yes. Sense. Now, Justin Trudeau's inability to maintain a united patriotic front for more than 15 seconds um, came to the forefront. Because then he immediately used the foreign interference hearing, which is trying to figure out what the extent of infiltration into his government is, tried to use that as a means to slap Pierre Polyev and accuse him of being involved in foreign interference, even though he's not in power. And then this blew up in his face. So that's where the country of Canada is right now. Canadians are talking about this and the internal party revolt. The scandal with India is sort of like we're one scandal ahead. Yarya Sinwar has so just died. So has, today... has it boomeranged on him? Has it boomeranged? Has attacking India boomeranged on Justin Trudeau, especially given India's extremely strong response and expelling six Canadian diplomats and recalling all of us, six of us? Yes, it has, but his support is, is, is already at minimum, right? It, 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 even before the scandal, it was left to just like the call to personality hardcore. Again, the Liberal Party is like the default party of Canada. We have a first-past-the-post system. It, it, all things equal, if there, were, if there were just blocks of wood running for each party, the Liberals would win every yes. time. They're currently mm -hmm. projected to be fourth place. Fourth. So Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party, the NDP too, are political corpses walking. Okay, so okay. can you like, can you like Schrodinger's Trudeau? Like, can can it get worse for him? Like, yeah, it boomed right in his face, and everyone who hates Trudeau kind of took the Indian side in this, and and is and is on Twitter making fun of him. And this is just another reason to hate him. If you're in the cult of personality, you only watch like the the media that is yep. hyper Trudeau friendly. The Indian narrative has not penetrated that. So they're still well, soon enough. Trouble. Facts, yeah. facts have a way of reaching the darkest corner in Canada. But that will stay with me for a moment. I want to bring in Professor Brahma Chilani for a moment because Professor Chilani, I want to understand the world knows the truth. Why would countries like the United States, United Kingdom, New Zealand and Australia to an extent, but not as much. Why would they stand with Trudeau when they know Canada is very, very weak on facts and on a sticky wicket? As far as Trudeau is concerned, he's on his last legs politically. He's facing a revolt within his Liberal Party to resign. But even if he resigns and there is new leadership in Canada, the problem for India will remain. Because almost four decades after the twin Air India flight bombings by Canadian Sikh terrorists, India faces the challenge of Canada, the US and Britain, these three countries are sheltering and shielding Khalistan militants who are openly glorifying terrorism against India. Yes. So this problem that India confronts is a problem that requires proactive diplomacy. It requires putting, uh, putting in the public domain India's concerns, spotlighting the fact that that the Air India twin bombings of 1985 yes. remain a concern for India because the very developments that preceded those Air India twin bombings, similar developments are unfolding today in Canada, in the US, and Britain. 
causing that's a very important to India. For example, India has not even spoken about those two uh, bombings of Air India flights. India should be talking about those Air India uh, bombings because they killed 331 people. Uh, as far as you know, one uh, bombing was concerned, it misfired, killing two baggage handlers in, in Tokyo in airport. Japan, but the other yes. bombing killed all 329 people on board. And we should be spotlighting this record of Canada. Canada and it was, was the same Justin Trudeau's father, Pierre Trudeau, at the helm of affairs that time. And unfortunately, Canada did nothing. You're absolutely right. And Daniel, uh, you know, in India today, we continue to highlight these stories. But I want to understand from you, Khalistanis appear to be fighting Khalistanis in Canada. They appear to be creating law and order problems within Canada and yet no crackdown. Uh, you know, isn't it unsafe for Canadians with these Khalistani terrorists and criminals operating freely in your country? Oh, it's incredibly dangerous and unsafe. And, you know, one of the things I said a year ago is, okay, if we're going to set the precedent that the most important Canadians for safety, because we didn't really care about the safety of the Canadians shot down on the PS 752 airliner uh, by the IRGC in Iran, they can all die and we'll just bow down to the people who did it. But if we're saying that Khalistani gangster quasi-terrorists are the most important Canadians in the world and we must protect them at all costs, well, what's the biggest threat to a Khalistani gangster terrorist? Another Khalistani gangster terrorist. So all roads lead back to we should probably do something about the Khalistani gangster terrorist problem. And this is sort of the social breakdown you've seen of Canada. And it's really exacerbated over the last year, post-October 7th. But we live in a country where, yes, we claim to have law and order, but it's very clearly a two-tiered justice system or a multi-tiered, maybe you want to say it. Uh, let's be honest. You can threaten yes. to kill. As long as you're not speaking English, you can threaten to kill whoever you want in this country because we're too lazy to click the translate button. So if you're doing it in Punjabi, in Hindi, in Arabic, and whatever, you can threaten to kill whoever you want. Um, if you want to threaten to kill someone in English, you can threaten to kill Hindus, Jews, Christians. What a you can shame. probably pick whites and men. But yes, you can, I mean... Churches are being burned. We're, we're a Christian country, and over 100 churches have been vandalized or burned down. Uh, synagogues are being shot at. Jewish day schools on Yom Kippur. Yes. Uh, Drive-by shootings happen there. And, of course, Hindu temples are vandalized. Um, and that's and Canada for you. That's Canada yeah. for you. It's so unfortunate under Justin Trudeau's watch. I've unfortunately run out of time on this part of the show. But Daniel and Professor Chilani, it's always awesome having both of you on, on India first.